Good morning, everybody. Um, just going to put you... Well, where am I going to put you? Let's put you right over here. So today, you guys, got a bit of a devotional video again for you. Five in the morning here. Oh, oof. I don't know if you heard any of that, pop, pop. So, getting old's rough. <laughs> just kidding, I'm 35. Um, yeah, we're just going to go by rote today. By the seat of our pants is what we're flying today, folks. I pray that Jesus would bless you. He would keep you. He'd make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord would make his face, lift up his countenance, excuse me, give you peace. May he look down on your life and smile today. So, the devotional. Alright, I guess let's get going, huh? Kind of a reaction video of sorts, I guess. Oh, 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 excuse me. I read them once, but yeah. So we have 1 John 1 5. This is the life giving message which we heard him share, and it is still ringing in our ears. We now repeat his words to you God is pure light. You will never find even a trace of darkness in him. It's a good one. It's an interesting translation of that verse. Um, sorry. Interesting translation of that verse, too. Um, I think that... It's a good one. I like it. It brings out, draws out some of the other, the other texts. Um, implications there. So, Calvinists... <laughs> Not to go right out and pick at you. Um, you know, you, you're also Protestant. You probably love that little rosary. <laughs> oh. This is the problem with Calvinism to non-Calvinists. We hear God predestining every single evil act such as it couldn't be otherwise as a Westminster Confession or a London Baptist. I forget which one. Maybe both. Um, declares that God he absolutely at least authors or how would you say that preordains evil to happen and evil to happen just as it does there's an element of sovereignty in that and there's an element of determinism and the determinism is what we're objecting to because it's important whether or not freely um, evil is committed freely or not. We don't commit somebody to jail um, who has an endocrine problem and has, you know, oh, at least we take it into account when we sentence people, right? Because if I sentence somebody who has a, th a tumor growing on their brain and they couldn't, you know, they didn't realize they even did something and they did something horrendous, that should be at least taken into account, right? Well, same thing with responsibility in the theological realm. Why would it not be an issue in the theological realm, too? We should have some compassion for those who are born unable, right? That's the problem with Calvinism, is they say that we are unable to repent and believe. Unable. Cannot, will not, would not. Um, and really would not is the appropriate term because they say that it's about the will. It's about somebody's willingness and we are unwilling to be willing or unable to be willing. And somehow yet we're still culpable for what we do. This doesn't check out to me, right? And that's the dissonance that a lot of people are hearing and why people get disenchanted about Calvinism. So hopefully that's not, to you, isn't the gospel. Because if your Calvinism is your gospel, you don't have a gospel. Let me just be frank. <laughs> I don't know why you're clapping. I'm talking about you. 
to give you one of your own. <laughs> Taste of your own medicine there, I guess. All right, you guys, the last, the other one is, uh, and by his one perfect sacrifice, he made us perfectly holy and complete for all time. Amen. Hebrews ten fourteen. How good. How good is God, folks. I hope you praise him today. I hope he gets the sum total of the people that, oops, that he paid for. He paid for everyone. Literally everyone. Or he wasn't the Messiah. We saw that yesterday. Responding to James White and uh, Thea. Right? He either paid for all sin and ended sin totally, or he was not the Messiah, Daniel 9.24. Also, Arminians. You know I couldn't get off the video without giving you some crap too, right? So for how long? How long are we perfected for? Just until we turn our back on him and run away? No. We're perfected forever. Once you're born again, you don't become unborn again. It's not a thing. He might take you out of this world. That's what I believe Hebrews 6 is kind of talking about. It's a temporal judgment upon a, a, a wayward Christian. Because we trample under the foot of the cross of Christ, right? If we're, It doesn't mean that if you... If you go about sinning once or twice either that you're going to be cast into hell or anything. It's amazing to me how many people can do zero research and come to terrible conclusions on different texts. Anyway, hopefully this isn't too bad audio-wise. I haven't tried it, just putting it down, I guess. I didn't really listen to the last one that I made either. So I don't know if I need to be louder or not, so let me know in the comments. It'd be great if you guys could, like, comment. <laughs> Just talk with me. I don't know. Um, share, like, subscribe. Give. I hope to do the Lord's work. Not my own. Jesus, help these people that hear this. Whenever they're hearing this. Even if it's in the rapture time, Lord Jesus, the beautiful thing is my videos will outlive me. And I have no idea what kind of impact that'll have. Just like A.W. Tozer didn't realize that yesterday I'd play his video. Back in 19 or whatever it was. Lord God. You can make us live on, Lord. You, you live on, so we will live on. God buries his workmen, but his work continues. Lord Jesus, I thank you for my recovery. God, not so long ago, there was a, a young man completely shattered and broken. And ashamed wounded ready to give up who was not a quitter but the Lord met me as he always does my Lord came for me to make me whole in Jesus. May he do the same for you. And more. In Jesus name.